seen other measures of, of improvement, um, even if the testing isn't where we want it to be. Dr. Carissa Fotinos, who's in charge of testing at the Washington Department of Health, is especially encouraged by the percent of tests that come back positive. Right now, it's around 4%. And despite more COVID testing sites coming online across the state, Dr. Fotino says we still have a lot of work to do. The, the more we ramp up testing, the better idea we have that we're identifying all the infections. The whole goal of this is to limit the spread of COVID-19. If the goal is to do better, what has to happen to increase testing? Yeah, I, I think I think it's a combination. I think there is not uniformity in how the tests are being applied when people seek health care. Another is that there is not the um, community access available across the state. And a shortage of tests also has to do with the way health care providers decide who to test. To the surprise of many, the CDC changed its guidelines this week and no longer recommends testing someone if they don't have symptoms of COVID, regardless of whether they've been in contact with someone who has the virus. That was a bit of a surprise, not just to me, but to other folks. This seems to fly in the face of everything you're telling me. What do you think about these new guidelines? We stay the same. We don't change our recommendations at all. We do think it's important for contacts of people with COVID-19 to be tested. Uh, and, you know, we, we are not going to change our recommendations based on that CDC guidance. Now, the governor, governor originally set a goal of 50 tests for every one positive patient. The DOH has actually taken that off of its website. I asked if they think that that's because they can't meet the goal. I'm told not necessarily. They say it's because a goal like that's hard to meet on a statewide basis. Officials are more focused on getting individual testing numbers up in individual communities. Maybe.